morning, my friend. Why do I say good morning? I have no idea what time of day you're watching this. I did this last time, too. Hello. Say hello. You want to be in? Oh, oh. got that amazing introduction out of the way. He's just sitting there judging me. That is my dog, Putty. He's 250 pounds. Let me show him to you one more time in all his glory so you can meet him. Um, he's he's Here special. Here is the pod man. Hello, pod man. Hello, sweet boy. You wanted to be in the video? Hello. Oh, you want belly rubs. Oh, I'll, I'll give you belly rubs in just a second, I promise. Before anybody comes for me about his weight, we were concerned as well. <laughs> we took him to the vet. He does not have a thyroid issue. Um, he does not overeat. We give him the proper amount of food. He is just a big bone boy. He's just a big boy. There's nothing really we can do about it. He does get plenty of exercise. He's just a big boy. I don't know what to tell you, but that is not the point of today's video. That took a far left turn. Anyways, hi, welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Ariana. And here on this channel, we don't do much, but uh, talk about Vintage and Antiques. Uh, that's also true in my day-to-day -day life. <laughs> I have a sale every Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, a live sale on this channel where I sell my vintage and antique finds. Now, normally I film shop-alongs on this channel. However, today's video is going to be completely different. So I recently realized, recently, that I've, I've got a little bit of stuff, just a little bit of stuff in my personal collection. Um... Anybody who loves vintage antiques, I'm sure you understand that we tend to collect things, hoard things, cherish things that we love. And I have quite a few. Now, truth of the matter is I'm 35 years old and I have no intention on stopping collecting anytime soon. So my house is pretty much full to the brim. So if I wanna keep collecting, I've got to let some things go to a new home. So with that being said, I am going to attempt to pull 28 items or more out of my personal collections today to offer for sale next Tuesday. I believe it's October 8th at 7.30 p.m. here on this channel. So if you see anything you like today coming out of my personal collection, please do come back for my live sale next Tuesday, October 8th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, and I will be offering everything you see me pull today. So if you're not doing anything for the next little bit and you wanna take a tour and see some of my favorite things, I hope you stick around and yeah, let's go treasure hunting. It's gonna be so hard, I'm so anxious. I don't, I don't know. I'm personally attached to a lot of my collections, so we'll see how this goes. So yeah, let's, let's just rip the bandaid off. Oh, sorry, one more thing. Um, a lot of you guys have requested a home tour and I completely understand why um, you would want to see my home and my collections, of course. However, I am the mother of a young child and just to protect her privacy in her home and her safe place, I will not be sharing the layout of my home or my home in its entirety. You will be getting a good look at my personal individual collections, but I will be purposefully leaving out um, like the floor plan and things like that just for privacy reasons and to protect her safe place. So I hope you guys all understand that and you still wanna watch, um, but I just wanted to say that real quick. And now we're really gonna get into the pick and park. I've gone ahead and cleared off my kitchen table. This is where we're going to be making our pile today. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really know where to start. So I think since we're already in the dining room, we're just gonna start in the so kitchen. This is a good a spot as any. We are currently in my kitchen. This is my kitchen counter. I am not getting rid of this. First and foremost, I do not want to ship this. It's got a huge hairline crack in it. A lot of people probably wouldn't like that about this piece. I don't mind the hairline. I like it. I think it adds to the piece. Um, so I will not be getting rid of that. This is an amazing double-faced paper mache vintage pumpkin lantern that I got from Enamor Amy. So that is not going anywhere either. This is one of my favorite pieces. It's an orange Sprite, not like the drink, but like the fairies, um, antique perfume lamp. That's going nowhere. 
Um, I also really love my Good Luck Cooking Witch jug with my disheveled, old, <laughs> decrepit <laughs> cooking witch in there. Um, my butterflies, I don't want to get rid of now. I have two of these girly pumpkin candles. Ah, I like those a lot too, but right here, I have this just absolutely beautiful. I'd always wanted one of these and I finally found one at an antique store in Alabama. It's a Staffordshire hen on nest. They're for me, one of the harder ones to find. I can find the glass ones. But the Staffordshire one, this was the first one I'd found in the wild that I could afford. Oh, it's so tough, but I think I could let go of him. Although he does look really good in the kitchen um, with my other items. But I think I can do it. So we are going to start with Mr. Staffordshire Chicken Man. Okay, now going to the corner of my kitchen. So we were right there. Now we are right here. I have a couple of these little vignettes throughout my kitchen on these little um, collection trays. There's really not much on here I want to let go of. Um, nothing in my Halloween decor right there that I wanna get rid of. Now, this guy is a beautiful antique napkin ring it is a bulldog beautiful patina look at that on the bottom it kind of looks like a butterfly uh, i guess because see i could also get rid of that little brass mouse there but i don't know that that would sell just by itself this though i think does have the potential to sell by itself so we will do this guy as well. Two to start. We're, we're, we did it. We ripped off the band-aid. We have a lot more to go, but two is done and I'm okay. So let's there just keep another going. little display in my kitchen. Now this one I started way earlier than the last one. This one is pretty much complete exactly how I want it. Um, so I don't really know. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is going to be so much harder than I thought it was going to be. I don't really know if there's anything I want to get rid of on this tray. I love his face. Look at his face. He's just so judgy. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, but no, I don't think I'm letting go of anything over here yet. We'll see how we do on the rest of the house. Now it's a little dark in this corner. We are still in my kitchen, but I have this three shelf display in my kitchen. Hello. And I'm actually standing on a chair because it's very tall. Um, but I do actually think there are a few things over here that I would be willing to let go of starting right here. So, I do. Let me move this. This is not going anywhere. I love this tin. It is very hard to find. That is staying with me. But holding the little tin, I have this little stockinette sleeping baby. Now, I do have three others <laughs> of this one, so I may be willing to let this one go. Very early, made in Japan, um, little baby. And then under her, there are these little baby shoes, or baby booties, that are so sweet. They are tattered, but they have these little mother of pearl buttons. And then look at this adorable little kid's glove. That is there as well. So the reason why I think I'll pull these is because right there, I have a really early German like little jewelry box. And I think these would go cute with that. So I'm gonna have to put you guys down to take that out. But that is what we're going after next. Here are the items I pulled from that shelf. Look at this box. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love it. It doesn't have its key. It's marked Germany on the bottom. Beautiful condition, especially considering its age. And look at that interior. Oh, it's so sad to see it go. Now, if this was a normal reselling video, I would probably pair this with the glove 
with the booties and with the baby. However, since all of this was purchased for my personal collection, I did not buy these items with resale in mind. So I think I have just a little bit too much invested in the box. So I think I'm gonna do the baby separate. So that's gonna be item number three. And then I will do the little booties and the glove with the box as item number four. Oh, I just love this so much. I'm sad to see it go, but it's just something we have to do. So item number four. There is going to be a couple of collections in my house that are gonna be harder than others. This is one of them. This is my flower frog collection. And as you can see, I have two empty shelves. So, well, two and a half, really. Oh, there's the Withers. Hello, Withers. You wanna say hi? Say hello. Hello. You guys remember when she was so small. She's so big now. Anyways, getting back to the flower frogs. This is one of, if not my favorite personal collection in the Withering Cottage. I love flower frogs. Don't ask me why, I just do. There are some that I will never get rid of. This one I picked up from Cindy at Mimi's Treasure Cottage. So different. Um, I will not be getting rid of that one anytime soon. This one is probably my all-time favorite. That was actually a gift from my handsome husband. I just love the shape and the patina on that one. This one too is amazing um and this one i love none of my flower ones are going anywhere so i don't really know which ones i will let go of if any um actually as i'm looking i see this one so this one right here came in its original box now i don't have the original box to any of my other ones and that might make you think that I would want to keep this one since it's in the original box but as we look this is the only one that has a box with it so it does kind of stand out so I think I'd be okay letting this one go so it's a really nice one it's a little disheveled I love that personally these are just so fun for ephemera displays or you could actually use them as a floral frog. And like I said, it comes with the original box. So I will I will offer up one flower frog, one. That's all I can do, okay? That's all I can do, so item number five. We are over by my window. I apologize for the lighting, but it is a window. <laughs> my poor plant, look, it's all dried up there, but the leaves are healthy on the bottom, so. I'm not really sure what to do about that, but we are looking at this little shelf here. Now there are a few things on this shelf I do not want to get rid of. One being this owl, it was from a wonderful subscriber friend of mine. He is not going anywhere. Neither is my bronze Victorian ice skater. I love him, he's staying. Um, but, oh, I love this too, my little deer. But I do have this milk glass uh, I, I want to say antique, but it might be vintage little oil lamp. I could might let that go. I could might let that go. I do love it. I love the color. It's like this clam broth. I don't know if you can tell. It is a functioning oil lamp. Yeah, let's just do it. We're going to do... We're gonna do this length. Items, I'm doing better than I thought I would. I thought I would chicken out, but so far we have six. So 22 more to go. Same little shelf. I've got a few of my treasures. Oh, and my beloved puppy dog. Um, But next to my beloved puppy dog, I have this beautiful Art Deco child's little play set with the butterflies on it. Now it is rusty crustiness, but I like that. I might could add something to it, like a little baby or some vintage millinery flowers, but I think we're gonna do this too. Now this cabinet here is another one that's gonna be so hard for me. This houses some of my most favoritest items. I know favorite is not a word, but it just holds some of my favorite things. We're gonna attempt and see if we can't find anything in here. 
Chances are we probably won't, but we will try to go through this cabinet next. The shelf one. <laughs> I don't really see, honestly, anything I want to part with on the first shelf. Like I said, these are some of my very favorite things. So this shelf is going to be the hardest one to let anything go of. Uh, second shelf. What is this one? I don't even remember. Oh my goodness. Look at this brush. That's different. I don't even remember that. But there is that really interesting brush. This Owl Victorian candle holder was given to me by a really good friend of mine. So that is staying. I love my perfume bottles. Those are going nowhere. That was gifted to me by a, a wonderful subscriber friend as well. These two little weirdos are some of my favorite things. So they're definitely not leaving. Um, I love this antique ephemera. That is just amazing. That was my actual wedding cake topper, so that has to stay. And those of you that are wondering about my little fawn here, um, I did not do this. She actually, I picked her up at a taxidermy store that was going out of business. She unfortunately was hit by a car and the person that brought her in to get taxidermied never came back and got her. So they accidentally hit her with their car and then brought her in and never picked her up. So that is her story and I just rescued her. She is absolutely beautiful and this is where she stays protected. But moving on, over here behind this piece, I do have these two amazing pieces of ephemera. So this one has, I believe, actual human hair on it. Um, and then this one I just thought was so different. I love these. Look at the little sequins on her wings. But I think I could do these two. I'll do those two. And then on this bottom shelf, again, some of my very favorite things. However, I do have this. Oh my gosh, why am I drawing a blank? Oh my gosh, a brownies um, by Palmer Cox Royal Lotto Box such amazing illustrations now the pieces are still in there and it's just this really old game but for me oops excuse me cinderella she fell out of her carriage for me it was all about the box um i guess i could let it go but then it makes that big space, but we can always fill that. <laughs> this was a gift from the one and only Catherine Young here on YouTube. So that is going nowhere as well. Then over here. Now, I love these, but I know nothing about them. They seem like they would be German to me. I just thought that they were so different. I was never able to actually find anything on them. They remind me very much of Schaefer and Vader, which is one of my very favorite ceramic companies. I have no idea if they actually are or not. Um, I definitely want to hold on to that one. I might could be convinced to let go of this one. However, I just don't know how good it would do on its own and the time of year. So I will hold on to that one for now. Um, but yeah, so out of that cabinet, we're going to take these two amazing postcards and we'll put those in a lot together and then we'll do the Palmer Cox Royal Lotto separate. We are in my bathroom. <laughs> I really like the shelf of vintage bathroom things. Oh, the little Chanel bottle fell over. Um... I don't know that there's really anything I want to get rid of in here either. If anything, I feel like I want to add to it. Uh, that's just me. Now, there are those two beautiful Victorian jewelry caskets up top. Um, I don't think I'm ready. I have sold off most of my jewelry casket collection, but I just don't think I'm ready to let go of those two. And as far as everything else in here, I'm kind of oddly attached to. 
So I think we're gonna leave this alone for now. Uh, yeah, I just, I'm just not ready, okay? We have found our way into my bedroom. Now, I collect water baby books. I love them. I just love all the different illustrations and variations and covers on every single one. But maybe if we go through, I can find one that I'm willing to pass on to somebody else. I just love these books so much. Everyone um, has different publication years and different illustrations that make each and every one special. Look at that mermaid. Oh my goodness. Oh, Let me go through these off camera and I will see if there is one that I am willing to pass on. One I have decided to let go of. It is the newest one in my collection. I believe it is from 1973. Look at that cover page. Oh, I just love these books so much. Look at the illustrations. Absolutely incredible. Um, 1978. 1978 is this version. But wait till you see the colored pages. So all of the illustrations are amazing. I love Water Baby books so much. But... Like I said, if I want to keep collecting them, I've got to let some things go. So this is going to be the one. Now, it doesn't have great value, but I just, I can't resist these. And maybe someone would want to take the pages out and frame them, these plates. Like, look at this one. It's so good. So this will also be included in the sale. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, I almost lost the page. Look at that one. <laughs> I love it so much. Love it. Love it. Love oh it. Oh no. <laughs> this is going to be a hard one. So this is my coffee table that also houses my morning hair collection. What I'm going to do, I just want to show you how it sits. It does have a glass top. That is how we're able to use it as a coffee table. However, because of the glare and because we have to get inside, I'm going to take the glass top so off. So here is a closer view of my Victorian hair morning collection. Now, I know a lot of people think that Victorian hair morning is very gross, very weird, all of the things. I totally understand. However, for me, I find it to be a beautiful art of people that were incredibly loved and lost. So I will never stop collecting these items. Do I want to get rid of anything in here? No, I don't. Will I try? Sure, I will. Now, as a surprise, I actually have my husband here. Say hi, husband. Hey. Hey. He actually came down and helped me take the glass off the coffee table because it kind of is a two-person job. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to ask him to look through this collection and for him to pick out a piece. Now, I can discuss it with him, but I'm going to let him try first to try to make it a little less difficult on me to make a decision so let's see what he picks out his job so seriously right now is there anything like you're gravitating towards or you just don't know i mean my initial was the cross oh yeah this cross this is amazing look at the details but it's the only one you have like that it is the only one I have like this. It's like three dimensional. That's an amazing piece. Ooh. So tough. I love this one too, even though it's broken. And look, I kept the price tag on it because I couldn't believe I got this for $5. Even broken, that's such a good deal love that piece and then my hair wreath my mini hair wreath right there I love that one don't pick that one okay <laughs> and fun fact this was actually my very first piece in my collection so that one is never going away <laughs> so what did you choose babe horsehair bracelet a horsehair it's my only horsehair one but with it being my only horsehair one, that makes me sad. But also, it is kind of the odd man out in my collection. It's the only memorial horse piece I have. There is a little 
horseshoe right there. So different. Um, I think it's beautiful. It's very unique. It is a bracelet. So are you happy with your choice? Yes. Yes, I am too. Because that means I get to keep all my human hair. <laughs> Which sounds so weird, but I love it. By my front door. Again, I just love all my stuff. Now, this actually sits on top of my doll cabinet which is another one of my collections where I know I just know I'm not gonna want to let anything go but uh we'll try we'll take a gander but we're doing this right now so let's not get overwhelmed I love this antique French Cinderella clock with the donkey that's not going anywhere my oh gosh why am I drawing a blank right now Stife there we go my Stife snail just got him. Love him. My putts, sheep, carriage, not going anywhere. My Victorian Easter egg. Look at that. Oh, I love that. That was a gift from Sugar Britches here on YouTube. That is staying. My putts llama. I only have one, so he's not going anywhere. And my babies now tucked in here. I used to have him sitting on the llama. However, he is no longer sitting on the llama. But look at this vintage silver knee hugger. Oh, now he is rusty. He's not rusty. That's not the right term. He's just disheveled. That's why I loved him. And I don't decorate in Christmas in red and greens. I do pinks and silvers. And I love that he's all, I don't, I just don't think anybody else would love him quite like I love him because of his condition so I think he's gonna stay and then my amazing mercury bead glass bonnet I just I just can't so nothing up here is going what does that mean it means we got to dig deeper <laughs> guys in advance for the lighting we are in a dark portion of my home but these are my treasured children. Surprisingly, these are the only dolls I have in my home. They are confined to one cabinet and one cabinet alone. So I know a lot of you know that I do love dolls and things that are similar to dolls, figural things, but actually this is my one and only cabinet. I've done pretty good restraining myself, but these are my favorite favorites my very favorites so i just don't know if i'd be willing to get rid of any of them now this little guy he's falling out a little bit out of his chair i really do love him roma but i might could let him go because he doesn't really match color wise with the rest of the shelf oh, he's so cute though and look at the little tin hat so I think we I think we will go ahead and do him. Um and I think I saw one up here I might would be willing to do if I can remember. Well, I do have this little girl. She oh no, I forgot why I love her. She's different because look, she is a baby powder dispenser. At a baby powder dispenser? That's so different. Gosh, but I do have so, so many. Okay, we will do the baby powder dispenser and the Roma guy. That's two. Don't ask me to do any more. Two is plenty. Two is plenty. I apologize for the barking. It is a very busy day at the Withering Cottage. There are people here doing maintenance on our air conditioning, and my dogs are not happy. Now, this is one of my few Victorian ribbon collections. These, I'm sorry. I don't think there's any over here I want to get rid of. I just, I can't. I love them. I love them so much. They're some of my favorite things, but that's my problem. See, I have so many favorite things, but I did notice over here this amazing antique tapestry bag. Now, it is gorgeous. Look at that detail along the edges. This is such a stunning example of one of these purses. This is actually the only one I have in my personal collection. 
I want to open it because I think it was marked France somewhere on the interior. I'll have to look further into that, but that beading is just so special on this piece. But it doesn't fit with my ribbons exactly. Um, I didn't really know where to put it because it's the only one I have in my personal collection. So I think we can do this we one. We have too. moved to my other bathroom. This is my little half bath on the main floor of my home. I do have this vintage soap dish wall. It is not complete. I want to fill it completely up, but I'm kind of a soap dish snob. They have to have a certain look to them, a certain patina. This one is by far my favorite. I love that one. Also love this one. And look at the goblin soap. So good. Um, in here, I might could do this saddle soap only because it is not actual soap it is leather and saddle soap so it's not exactly bath soap so i think we'll do this and then over here i've got some more of my vintage soap items on the back of the toilet we're getting real personal here now i do love these bears those are little bars of soap this is my favorite soap bar this is an antique carved soap i keep it in a cloche to keep her safe but that's not going anywhere both of those were gift to me one by my amazing friend enamor amy here on youtube and my mom got me the other so i get this bath soap set back here is really pretty but maybe i could do that too and do like a choice on that and the saddle soap Here are the two items i pulled from my bathroom the leather saddle soap and the beautiful box of bath soap 1942 um, now, this soap is, you know, it's older soap, but you can see how I had it displayed in my bathroom. Maybe you want to have it displayed in a similar fashion in your bathroom. But these two items, I don't know if I want to do them together. I think we'll do a choice, a choice on these. So, although these are two items, it's going to be one round. So these are just gonna classify as one item. We have 15 items, 15 items more than I thought I could come up with. So <laughs> I'm pretty happy we're about halfway there. Um, so let's just keep and going. I do apologize for the glare. This is my personal jewelry collection. It is actually in a glass display in my bedroom. It is a mix of costume jewelry, antique jewelry, um, just a few of my favorite jewelry pieces. I do wear these. I don't have like a jewelry box. This is how I pick my jewelry. So it just slides on the front and I can kind of reach in and pick out what I want to wear for the day. I don't really know if or what in here I would be willing to let go of because again, I get sentimentally attached to all of my pieces. Okay, I'm look. I see something right there. So we all, well, maybe you've heard of the brand Whiting and Davis. They are most known for their purses. However, they also made jewelry. This is a Whiting and Davis piece. I think it is so stunning. Look at that stone in the center. That is amazing. Although I do love this piece, you can see right there, maybe it says Whiting and Davis. That is the most awkward angle ever. Hang on, let me show you. Let me show you, let me show you, let me show you. Let's see, this way. Whiting and Davis. I could probably let this go. It would be super, super hard but I feel like I could do it. Also right there, now this is not an antique piece. It is a modern piece meant to resemble an antique piece, but this is a beautiful necklace and it is reminiscent of a Victorian perfume bottle. 
So here's the little dabber and it is attached by a chain. And it just sits like that. It is beautiful. I think it's made out of bone. Here is the brand. It's a very good brand. I have to remember. I don't I don't know. I try to sell as much vintage and antiques as I can, so maybe not this piece. Let me look around and we'll see what I come up with. Oh, I found one more piece. It's going to be this amazing like oyster shell and druzy and black onyx necklace now this is a statement piece this is very big i actually purchased this at scott's antique show and i paid quite a bit for it the back is really detailed with all of those amazing rivets it looks as though it was handcrafted i don't really know much about it you can see the sparkle of that druzy in there it's really good quality, um, but you, you don't even necessarily have to wear it. It can just be a display piece, but I'm gonna put it on real quick so you guys can see the sides of this one. Not wearing the right sweater for this piece, but here she is on. You can shorten it or lengthen it, um, but see how big, it's such a statement piece. It is beautiful though. But I think it's time maybe someone else will love it and actually wear it more than I do. So this is going to be, I think that makes item number 16 and item number 17. Again on the book so you can see the size compared to my hand. It is huge but it's just beautiful. Beautiful. Of course we've got to add the stunning Whiting and Davis necklace as well corner of my room first of all this is one of my most prized possessions it is my victorian hair morning wreath i love it look at all the color variations this was essentially a family tree so this is like the matriarch that was probably the youngest member of the family absolutely incredible not selling that but next to it i have my mannequin of all of my insect brooches plus my amazing Czechoslovakian um, Egyptian revival necklace. I don't think I will ever get rid of this. I just love it too, too much. But we can take a look at my insect brooches and see if there's any I'm willing to part with. Now, looking at it from a distance, I will say one in particular does stand out to me, and it is this one. It's just a little too vibrant Oop, compared to the rest. He's trying to run away. I caught you. Um, it's just a little too vibrant compared to the rest. It is a SA. Let's see if all the rhinestones are there. It looks like they are. It does need a little bit of a cleaning, which I will do. But I think we're going to do this one. In the brooch, I thought I would just show you guys how I do clean my vintage jewelry, just in case you're looking for a way. So um, all I do is... I just wanted to show you first the before. Here's the before. All I do is cover the entire thing in Dawn dish soap and then sprinkle it with baking soda and then gently scrub it with a toothbrush and then rinse with warm water. So let's see if it cleans up. Again, here is the before. She is covered in Dawn on the baking soda and then we're gonna scrub. Here is the after. So some of the glue around the gemstones has darkened, but I definitely think it shined up the gemstones a lot more. And I think she turned out really nice. Holy sterling silver. So this is my sterling silver cabinet. <laughs> Sterling is probably one of my oldest collections. I've been picking up Sterling at flea markets, thrift stores, estate sales for, oh gosh, since I was 16 years old. So this was my first collection. So it is one of my biggest collections. There is a lot, a lot to choose from in here. Oh gosh, where to even start? Um, this brush right here is absolutely beautiful. Now it looks like it has a monogram on it with an H, so probably won't do that. The fish pieces in front of it, those are some of my favorite. I love him as well. Um, what is this? Let's see. Gently, 
gently. This is a very sweet set. So this is, my hand's still a little wet from washing the brooch. Um, this is a really sweet little set of sterling salt and pepper shakers. I love that it comes in a box. The box is kind of tattered, but again, I love that. It does still close, I think, do you? It's a little off center, but I bet it would. Um, definitely an older box. Let's, hmm, there's a little piece of paper in there. Let's, I can't decide. Um, this is so hard for me. Let's go ahead and do these. We'll do these and we'll try to find a couple more items in the sterling it's different. Cabinet. This is a little sterling perfume bottle. I don't have many perfume bottles. This, I have this one that up and I also have this one uh, so that is a possibility I don't know how desirable a candle holder would be we also have two little toothbrushes that's cute um, we have a little creamer and sugar possibly um, this individual salt with the mini tongs is really cute. Oh goodness, how do I decide? Look at this little baby rattle. The sterling silver phone baby rattle. And then we have these, this baby rattle. Mmm. I just don't know. Okay, let me, oh, look at this, the little sterling silver stamp book. That's amazing, look at that. We have a bookmark, a sterling silver cross bookmark. Um, what are you? Here's a locket, is there anything in the locket? I'm telling you guys, it is so hard to go through life one-handed when you're filming. I don't know if you've ever tried it, but it is not easy. Does it lock? No, it does not shut, so we won't be doing that. Uh, oh gosh, why is this so hard? Here's a little baby cup. It's engraved. I like that. I don't know if somebody else would. We have a little sterling snail. Now he is not solid. He is like covered in a sterling silver wrap. So he is more than likely resin and then sterling on top. He is marked 925 on the bottom. I guess we could do him. We'll do the little sterling silver snail and we'll do the sterling silver perfume bottle. There we go. There's our three items my best to show this but where it was you really couldn't see it so i did take it off the shelf um or off the wall it was hanging up it is this little like trinket shelf made out of old rulers um i thought i'd just do this whole thing now i never completed it so i only have something in the first five spaces and the bottom space is empty but i'm sure i have something in my office i can fill it but it's got a teeny tiny vintage little lipstick a miniature antique um or vintage little chamber pot with a pig in it i love this thimble look at the needle point at the top of it and the stars along the sides so that'll be coming in there this little marble bird is so detailed. He'll be in there as well. And then we have a little brass bunny rabbit in the world's like smallest dice ever. Um, and then the last item will just have to be a surprise for the sale. So this is gonna be our next item. Next, um, I've shown this before. This is my hat pin collection. So I have this old footstool and I found a cloche that just fit perfectly on top of the footstool. And this is where I house all of my hat pins. So I don't really like getting rid of them, but we can look through there and see if there's any I'd be willing 
to offer. Um, of course, I gotta take the cloche off first and then we'll look in a little so better. I took the cloche off and here they all are with the exception of two. I've already kind of grabbed two off. Um, this one right here is more vintage than antique. And I picked it because it just didn't really match with the other ones. It was kind of too bulbous with this bead, but really beautiful. I love the rhinestones on that one. So we're going to do that one. And then we have this little stick pin one with the like lattice cage on there. I think that one's really sweet. And then I think we'll do one really long one. Now the long ones are some of the hardest ones to find because they were banned pretty early on for safety reasons. This is a really long one and it's open. It's got some enamel painting and I think it will go good with the other two. So we're gonna do these three in a lot and I think they really complement each other. So these are the three we're taking out of my hat pin collection. And that was really hard, really hard. <laughs> in my kitchen, I have this little Halloween display in the center of my island. And I have this tattered, it does have a stain on it, but this Halloween Jollity postcard with the little pixies and the little girl and the anthropomorphic pumpkin. It was never posted. Um, I do have more Halloween postcards that are currently on my fridge, but this is the only one sitting here in this assemblage. And I think just because I have so many, I might offer this one. Maybe somebody else like me doesn't mind that it has the spot on it. I just think it is so fun. So we are gonna add this to the sale as in well. In this corner of my living room, I have my, oh, my fairy soapbox. One of my holy grail items. I will never ever get rid of this. I just got it. I love this. This is staying. But to the left of it, I have my trophy collection. Now these are all vintage trophies. Um, I have, currently I have two, four, I have five trophies. Does a person need five trophies? Probably not. So I think as sad as it makes me, we are going to do this amazing three-handled loving cup one. And it says presented by American Hardware and Plumbing Corporation, Manila PI. And then it won by is blank. And then on the back, which is my favorite part, or the front, depending on how you want to display it, D&M trademark with this amazing dog on it. Oh, I love this. And do you see the three handles? It's my only three handle one, but I think I can let go of this one because I have those four. Do I need five? No, I don't. This one has a little dent on it, but oh, the three handles makes it so unique. So we are going to do this one. So we have my taxidermy cabinet. Now I'm not going to go too deep into my taxidermy cabinet because I know it will probably upset some people. So I, I didn't, um, I collect items. Oh gosh, how do I word this? I collect rescues. Okay. I did not harm any of my taxidermy pieces, but just to make everybody as comfortable as possible, I'm going to limit what I show in my taxidermy cabinet. However, I did find this amazing vintage handcrafted in Canada. Um, Oh gosh, dandelion seed paperweight. I think it is so beautiful. I don't know how they did that without the weight pressing on those like such fragile little flyaways, but somehow they did it and it's beautiful. But since this is my taxidermy cabinet and this does not classify, we are going to add this beautiful paperweight to the sale as well. And right next to these items, I have these items in cloches. I like cloches for one reason. I think they make everything look so much nicer. And two, it really cuts down on dusting. Now, I have no desire, honestly, to get rid of any of my items inside the cloches. However, sitting on top of this cloche as part of the display, I have this beautiful rosary. Um, I love the patina on it. I've, 
I've just, I've had her for about 10 years and I've always had this sitting on the cloche like this, but I imagine she'd be okay without it. So I think because honestly, I'm running out of things I'm willing to part with at this moment, um, we are gonna do this beautiful rosary and I'll put it in a really nice um, vintage box. So we're gonna do the rosary as well. Why are you, there we go, the rosary, it's so pretty. So I'm on my last item and I have scoured my house and I cannot find anything. So we're back to the jewelry area because I did see these earlier, let me reach in here. I don't have any rings currently displayed in them. Now these antique ring presentation boxes are so hard to find for sale. They are always not for sale at any antique store. They're always used in displays. This one is like a little book and this one is celluloid. Um, the celluloid does have some staining. It looks like somebody at some point wrote rings on there. So maybe not that one, but this one, this little book one. And I think I may have a ring I can include with this. Um, it won't be an antique ring, just a modern ring. Um, but let me look at my rings and see what I can Here find. are some of my rings, actually all of my rings. Um, a lot of them are costume, but I think this one right here is really pretty with that, um, lab created fire opal in there. This might be a good one to pair with the box. Let's see how it looks inside the box. There it is in the box. It's just such a cool presentation box. Like when you open that, if you're proposing or gifting it to somebody and you open it and it stays in the center like that, I think it is amazing for a display to house one of your favorite pieces. Now this ring is probably a little um, big for the box. It doesn't close all the way, but I think display ability, display ability is really nice with these two. So this is going to be our 28th item and we did it. We are done. We're done. And here is everything that will be available during my live sale on October 8th, Tuesday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern at the Withering Cottage. This is all of the items that we picked out of my personal collection. So if you see something that you like or that you may be interested in, definitely try to come to that sale. It should be really fun. And um, everything will be offered as a offer up format. So I don't know the prices of any of these items as of yet, but really fun collection of treasures. Just like that we're done just like that for you but that was an all-day event for me that was stressful but we did it and if you're still watching thank you guys so much i know this was a little bit of a different video than normal but i so appreciate you being here and going along with me through my personal collections so yes if you did see something you liked that i pulled do come back next tuesday to see what? Well, you already know what I'm bringing. I don't know what I'm talking about. Clearly, I'm tired. But thank you all once again for joining me at the Withering Cottage. Bye!